In this video, we are going to build a small application that will allow us to log in into our application using a Hotmail account. So let's go to create a new project. We're going to use an MVC application. So model, model view controller, and I'll say login Microsoft, enter, .NET 7. I will not choose an authentication type so that we can create our own code. So we are here, let me press Ctrl F5 to run our application just to see that everything is okay. Great, so now we need to create a service in Azure so that we can use them as an identity provider. So let me go to portal.azure.com. I will use my account. Then I will go to app registrations. If you don't find it here, you can always come to app registrations and then just select it from here. I will click on new registration. I'll say external login demo, and then I will choose the third option. Then here I need to select web because I want to redirect the user back to a website. Then I will come here, I will copy this, and I will paste that here. And I will write sign in Microsoft. This is a default address that we're going to use in our application to process the information that Azure sends to us about the information of the user. So now let me click on register. I need to save this information, this client ID that we have here. So let me click on here. Let me open a notepad and let me paste this here. And now let me go to certificates and secrets. Then let me choose new client secret. I will write any description, my app and add. Then I will have this value copied and I will paste it here in my notepad. Now after that, we have to go back to Visual Studio. I need to store those two pieces of data that I just copied from Azure here. So let me say Microsoft Client ID and also Microsoft Secret ID. So the Client ID is the first one that we copied. So let me paste this here. And the second one is the Secret ID. So let me paste this here. Now I need to install a NuGet package, which will make it easy for us to authenticate using Microsoft as a provider. So let me say manage NuGet packages, browse, paste this here, Microsoft SPNet Core authentication Microsoft account, install, accept. Now with that, we can go to the program class. Let's go to the program class to configure a service. Let me come here and let me say builder services at authentication, then add Microsoft account options. And let me paste this. As you can see, client ID corresponds to Microsoft client ID and client secret to Microsoft client secret. Let me put a semicolon here. And now here in the HTTP request pipeline, before the use authorization, I will say use authentication. Now let's configure identity. First, what I will do is that I will write some code that will allow us to process the claims received from a identity provider like Microsoft. So let's go to the Solution Explorer, right click here, add new class, I'll call it users controller. Now there is a lot of code here in this class, so just so you don't have to see me typing all that, I will just copy and paste it and I will explain it to you line by line. So first we have the constructor because we need to inject two services, the signing manager to sign in the user and the user manager to create the user. After that, I will create a login action. And in here, as you can see, we're receiving a message which we're going to show to the user. This is just in case there is an error with the identity provider. I will want to display the error to the user. And then we return the view. After that, we're going to create another action, which is the one that is going to redirect the user to the identity provider. So let me paste this here. As you can see, we have this external login action, which receives a provider, which can be Microsoft, Facebook, Google, etc., and a return URL. Then I build this redirect URL, and I'm using this register external user, which is an action that we're going to create in just a moment. This is the one that is going to actually register the user into our application from the data that comes from the identity provider. Then we have some properties which we're generating from the signing manager, we're passing the provider and also the redirect URL. Then we have this challenge result, which is going to 
related the user to the identity provider so that they can log in over there and then we get sent back the information of the user. Now let me create this register external user action here. So let's paste this code. As you can see here, we're creating this register external user action, which is receiving a return URL, which is this one that we have configured here. And also we are getting a remote error, which is a error that we receive from the identity provider. Then we build the return URL, we build this message, which is an error message. And as you can see, if remote error is a null, then it means that we got an error from the identity provider, like Microsoft, for example. And then we have message error from external provider, remote error, and then we redirect the user to the login action so that they can see the actual error message. And then we do the same for info. We try to get the info of the user. If it's null, then it means that there was an error. But if it is not, then we try to log in the user using the external login that may already exist. If this is successful, if this is successful, then it means that the account already exists. So we can just redirect the user back to the return URL and that's it. But if this does not succeed, it means that the user doesn't have an account already. So it means that we have to register the user, which is what we do now. We get the email of the user from the claims, as you can see here. Then we instantiate a identity user. Then we create that user. If it is not successful, then we show the error to the user. Otherwise, we add the external login using this add login AC method. And if that succeeds, then we sign in the user and then redirect them back to the return URL. And that's basically it. And by the way, this code works with any provider. This is actually some code that I took from the scaffolding of identity. I just made some adaptations. Now, after this, we need to create a logout method so that our users can log out. Then I need to create the login view. So let me go to views. Let me create a folder here, users. And then let me create a login view, view, enter, login. And this is going to be a simple view. Let me put this here. And as you can see, we are displaying the message in the case there is one. If there is not, we're just going to display this button that is sending the Microsoft provider and it says continue with Microsoft. Now I want to configure identity and entity framework core. So for that, we have to go back to manage NuGet packages, manage NuGet packages, and let's come here and I will use SQL Server with Entity Framework Core. So let me put here Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server, install, accept. Then because I am using Visual Studio, I need to use the tools package so that I have access to the add migration command and the update database command. So accept. And finally, I need to install the Identity Entity Framework Core package. So let me paste this here. Microsoft Spinet Core Identity Entity Framework Core install accept. Now let me create a DB context. So let me create a new class here. I'll call it application DB context and I will inherit from identity identity DB context control dot to bring the corresponding namespace control dot again to generate the constructor that have options here. And as you can see, it is public. Make sure it is public and not protected. Now I have to go to the program class because I need to configure some services. Let's come here before the builder build. And let me paste this here. As you can see, I am configuring the application DB context as a service. I have this connection string, which we're going to configure in just a moment. I am adding identity using identity user and identity role, just in case you want to configure roles in your application. I have sign in require confirm account false, just that we can make tests more easily because we don't have to confirm an account. Then I'm configuring identity using this DB context that we just created. And finally, I have this post configure so that I can customize the login path and the access denied path to be users login. This should be users login and users login here. All right. So now let's configure this connection string. So let me come to the app settings.json file and let me come here. Let's say connection strings, default connection. And let me paste this connection string. We have server dot because 
the name of my SQL Server instance coincides with the name of my machine, database login Microsoft DB, integrated security through so that we can use my Windows credentials to authenticate into my SQL Server instance. And then we have trust server certificate equal to true so that we don't have any errors here in development. All right, now I have to add some links into my layout so that the users can go to the login page. So let me come to the share folder at view. I want to create a partial view. I'll call it login links. And then I will just paste this. As you can see here, I am saying that if the user is signing in, then I'm going to say hello and their name and then log out. And finally we have, if the user is not logging, then we will show them a login register link here so that they can go to the login page. Now let me use this partial view in our layout. So let me go to layout here and below this on our list, I will say partial name login links and let me close this here. Now let me compile my whole application. We're almost done. Package Manager Console, because I want to add the migration. If you don't have the Package Manager Console here, you can always come to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Package Manager Console, and then say Add Migration, Initial, and we have our migration here. Now Update Database, Enter. This will allow me to create my database using this migration. All right, this should be done. Let me come to SQL Server Management Studio. Let me refresh here so that we can find our login Microsoft DB here. And let me go to the users table so that you can see that it is indeed empty. And now we're going to fill it with a Microsoft account. So let me come here. Let me press Control F5 to run our application. And let me go to login register, continue with Microsoft. This will redirect me to Hotmail. And as you can see, we have this information in Spanish, but it's basically asking me if I want to give access to the external login demo to my information. So I will say yes. And as you can see here, I am here and, I, and it says, hello Gavilanch at hotmail.com. And if I log out and then log in again, you will see that this will be quicker because I already gave permission to this application to have access to my information. If you want to learn more, please check out my Udemy courses today. I have courses on Entity Framework Core. I have courses on building applications with React and ASP.NET Core and also Angular with ASP.NET Core applications and more. Link with a discount to all of my courses in the description of this video. Thank you.